This is Christopher John Bjorkness. It is April 25th, 2024. I have found a ton of proof that validates my theory that uh, in the messianic era, they are planning for uh, the new Garden of Eden to be underground in hell. They are planning for the new Noah's Ark to be underground in bunkers and tunnels where they're going to ride out the apocalypse, the war of Gog and Magog, World War III. They're going to ride that out underground in hell in their new Garden of Eden. Their new Noah's Ark is going to be underground in hell and the world to come. Olam Haba, their Jewish utopia, is to be underground. And this is absolutely nothing new for them. There have always been large groups of cave-dwelling Jews. There's even, there's even a Wikipedia page about it. Uh, the Essenes, the ones who wrote the Dead Sea Scrolls, lived in caves underground. The Edomites, who converted to Judaism, lived in caves and in underground buildings that they built. The uh, North African troglodytes, described by Josephus, lived in underground cities. And in Libya, Morocco, North Africa, there are many Jewish underground cities. They would bury their dead above ground and themselves live underground in hell because they worship darkness. They worship Seth. They want to live in hell. They hate the sun. They hate the sun god, Ra. Ra in Hebrew means evil. Their god is a cloud of darkness, a black cube that lived in the Holy of Holies. Their goddess, Shekinah, her divine presence, lives in the cave of the patriarchs that Abraham supposedly bought as a grave site. They believe that cave is the entranceway to the new Garden of Eden, which is hell. The world to come is hell, and they are planning to live underground. There have always been large groups of Jews, cave-dwelling <laughs> cave Jews who were troglodytes, and that's their goal. The Turkish Jews, the Karaites, the Khazars had their temples in, and synagogues underground and in caves. Uh, there, there are Karaite synagogues in Istanbul and in Israel that are underground. All their synagogues are supposed to be underground because they worship darkness. They hate the sun. They want to get away from the sun. That's why we see geoengineering trying to block out the sun. Very recently, we have underground synagogues built in Israel. There is an underground synagogue beneath the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall, beneath the Temple Mount, where they're going to build their third temple to Satan. They have constructed an underground synagogue. This is satanic. Worshiping their gods underground is satanic. Shekinah is the female aspect of Satan, of Seth, androgynous Seth. Um, in their uh, train stations, they have the deepest underground synagogue that they built relatively recently. But underground synagogues are nothing new, as I'm going to show you. There were underground synagogues throughout Europe during the Middle Ages. And this spills over into Christianity. You have Jesus being resurrected into the afterlife in a cave. Christians built churches in Ethiopia, Rome, and throughout the ancient world underground in caves and catacombs. They would hold their secret meetings in caves 
and catacombs. There are Christian, there's Christian graffiti throughout caves and catacombs, and in Ethiopia that to this day there are underground Christian churches. So this is the Abrahamic faiths are inherently satanic. They despise the sun god Ra. Ra is called evil. They utilize lunar calendars as opposed to the solar calendars of the Gentiles. Uh, the God of Israel appears repeatedly throughout the Old Testament as a cloud of darkness blocking out the sun. The Egyptians were cursed by blocking out their sun god, Ra. They want Seth to rule. They want to live underground. They want the tree of knowledge to take the place of the tree of life by flipping over creation so that the uh, they live in the darkness, in caves, underground. We see this in uh, Kabbalistic science fiction, for example, of the socialist H.G. Wells in his book, The Time Machine. Uh, this new race lives underground and feeds upon human beings. He also put it into his movie, um, Things to Come. They eventually build a city underground that is perpetually lit. The uh, Kabbalists believe that the darkness will shine on the eighth day, which is the eighth candle of their menorah. As I've gone over again and again, they clearly worship darkness and want to live underground and have always had prominent groups who lived in caves. Josephus wrote about it. It appears in the Old Testament, and we have the archaeological evidence of all of it. So uh, very recently, we had uh, Chabadniks building tunnels in their chief uh, synagogue underground, so this is not only something that was ancient, something that was medieval, it is current. It is a thread throughout Jewish history that they are cave dwellers and that their world to come is going to be underground. So some of you, probably most of you, <laughs> have seen uh, this rather amusing video of an apparent a bodnik coming out of the ground. I don't know why that's not showing. Let's start that again. So there he is escaping from the uh, storm drain. And uh, they had a whole thing where they built massive tunnels underground. And they were caught and they filled it in with cement. The city filled it in with cement, covering up all of the evidence. And we have a WEF guy, Yuval Noah Harari, talking about the technological Noah's Ark that they are planning, which I'm saying is going to be underground and is uh, why they have built so many underground bunkers and tunnels. They want to ride out the new flood, the apocalyptic war, nuclear weapons, biological weapons, chemical weapons, blocking out the sun, killing off all organic life to replace it with their new race of robotic AI slaves who do not depend upon any kind of ecosystem of carbon-based organic life forms. If bad comes to worse, then when the flood comes, the scientists will build a Noah's Ark for the elite, leaving the rest to drown, the rest of the people and then the rest of the, of the ecosystem. If bad comes to worse, then when the flood comes, the scientists will build a Noah's Ark for the elite, leaving the rest to drown, the rest of the people and then the rest of the, of the ecosystem. If so, bad comes to 
this is what I've been saying, that uh, their goal is to utilize bunkers and tunnels underground as their new Noah's Ark to ride out the, uh, the coming apocalypse. Galactic war. As far as I know, Harari never tied it to that. He simply said that there will be some kind of new technological Noah's Ark. But um, given their history of being troglodytes and given uh, the fact that their religion shuns the sun, their day begins at sunset. Uh, they utilize a lunar calendar. Their god Shekinah is the moon. Uh, all of that indicates, and I have abundant proof that I'm going to show you, and this is only a small fraction of what I've found, but what I found is so much that I can't show it all to you, at least not in this video. Um, I want to thank uh, the nations who uh, tipped me off as to Harari validating my theory on his uh, Twitter page. He's been doing uh, yeoman's work, promoting my work, and uh, contributing his thoughts to what I've been posting, and I'm uh, very grateful. I'm not even certain if it's a him. <laughs> I apologize. There's no way of knowing when it's uh, an anonymous Twitter account. So this is uh, their goal. Their goal is um, to turn their world to come into... Sheol, uh, hell, the world beneath will become the world above and the world will flip over. Everything will be like an hourglass that's turned over in the world to come and their black sun will illuminate them underground. That's why they're building synagogues underground. That's why they're planning for their technological Noah's Ark to be underground. And we on the surface, they're all going to be killed off. And that's going to be the great cleansing of the evil other side of the Sitra Akhra, so that the Sitra de Smola can uh, <clears throat> steal all the sparks of holiness, everything that is good, true, and beautiful about humanity in the Gentiles. They can steal it and then bring it underground with them in their planned world of hell, their planned world to come. And that has been their plan all along. This is uh, from Robert Flood. It demonstrates that the tree of life in uh, our world is actually the roots of the tree and that the branches and uh, leaves will eventually be the Kelly pot that flips over and becomes the top when uh, in the world to come, everything is reversed. The black sun illuminates them. We are cleansed from the surface of the earth, and they begin to live underground in their world to come. And I want to thank my donors, Carolus, Norbert, Umberto, Gregory, Bob, Lance, Bosma, Angelina, Jerry, Jeannie, Barry, Ali, Ryan, Carolina, Anisha, Kelly, Mark, Robert, Kevin, Gary, Elton, at John Garitis, Paul, Oliver Wilson, George, and uh, at Alan Greenspun. So let's start uh, going through uh, some of the abundant proof that I've found that all this is so, and that these are their plans, and that they have always had groups of their own people who lived underground in caves and in tunnels. Uh, this is uh, something about this new underground synagogue beneath where they're going to build uh, the third temple on the Temple Mount beneath the Wailing Wall. They have constructed a uh, new synagogue that they're very excited about. I am right now in a very special secretive place. I am underneath the Temple Mount. And we are in this secret synagogue that is very rarely open to the public. It is the most gorgeous synagogue I've ever seen in my entire life. It's so this is, uh, this is a new under, 
underground synagogue in a long tradition of underground synagogues. There are tunnels throughout Jerusalem, beneath the Western Wall and throughout Jerusalem. I've uh, read reports of Jews who wandered those tunnels uh, seeking the divine presence. Um, Shimon bar Yochai, the, the uh, very um, virulently anti-Gentile rabbi who is prominent in the Talmud for calling Gentiles beasts, for saying that the best among the Gentiles deserves death, which means the Gentiles must be completely eradicated from existence. Uh, he lived in a cave with his son, um, Eleazar, for 12 years, like the 12 months, the 12 lunar cycles of the year, the 12 uh, zodiac uh, symbols, the 12 tribes of Israel. He supposedly lived in a cave for 12 years and there gained his enlightenment. Why would he gain his enlightenment in a cave? Because... The God of Israel is the God of hell, is Satan, is Seth, is Shekinah, the female aspect of Satan, Mother Earth who lives beneath in the earth. Uh, the original mythologies had humanity being created in the womb of the earth. In the afterlife, people are buried underground, so the world to come is the afterlife of humanity, and they will live like the dead underground in Tartarus. This is, uh, that last one was by uh, Burrell Solomon, and you can find it on YouTube. Here's the URL. Here's the URL of another one, very excitedly describing uh, this. I guess it's Dr. Drew Allerton from Bible Trek. Beneath the street level in Jerusalem, um, above us here, are the walls that are actually built into the western wall. We're now beneath the ground level that you can get to where the Wailing Wall is, but this is the wall that Herod built, a huge retainer wall. And this is a synagogue that sits within the western wall. You can see there at the far end the cage-like uh, structure that would house the Torah. I don't know if it blows your mind like it does mine, but this is uh, hellish stuff. This is satanic, <laughs> building synagogues underground in the modern age. Really weird stuff, very telling of what their ultimate plans are and what they have always planned for themselves and for humanity. Uh, this is... Uh, World's deepest underground synagogue connects material and spiritual Chabad Lubavitch website. This is their uh, underground synagogue. For more than 7,000 daily passengers who travel on the Jerusalem Tel Aviv heavy rail line, Yitzhak Navan station, is the gateway to Jerusalem, and evidently the gateway to hell, uh, located to the adjacent blah, blah, blah. There was a tremendous demand for a synagogue here, says Rabbi Yeshayahu Weiss, who is the Chabad rabbi of the new underground synagogue. World's deepest underground synagogue. So we have Chabad building tunnels under their synagogue in New York. We have Chabad <laughs> building an underground synagogue in the train station. What's going on? Uh, the Essenes who wrote the war scroll, the scroll of the war of the sons of light against the sons of darkness. But their light is the illuminated darkness, the darkness of the fourth day, 
the darkness of the world to come when the moon shines as bright as the sun, when they live in their caves underground as troglodytes, when humanity has been exterminated from the surface of the earth together with every other organic life form, except perhaps for herds of human cattle that they keep to feast upon in their banquet feast of the Leviathan and the behemoth, as the Midrash describes, as I've shown in my previous videos, that they are planning to eat the Gentiles at this banquet feast, and they utilize the code words of Leviathan and behemoth for the east and the west that will, in their plans, kill each other off. And then they talk about how since we're not going to be slaughtered in a kosher manner, they still have the ability to consume us. Literally, they're planning to eat us. Uh, Josephus wrote about uh, the Jewish troglodytes in the ancient world that eventually evolved into the underground Jewish cities in Libya, Morocco, and throughout North Africa. Uh, how the nation of the troglodytes were derived from Abraham by his wife Keturah. Uh, and they took possession of Troglodytus, the underground city in Africa. Uh, there's something in here, too, about it. You can uh, pause the video and read it if you'd like. I'm, I've got so much to show, I can't go through and read everything. But this is very important. This is an article that appeared uh, on a man's journey, I think it appeared in 1907, and uh, I'll go and show the cover, I guess, when I get done reading from it. It's an article called The Troglodyte, the Cave-Dwelling Jews of the Sahara. <laughs> on August 16th, 1906, I commenced a three weeks excursion into the Tripoli Jabal. As a sandy desert must be traversed, this journey is particularly perilous during the summer season, but I could not let pass such a unique opportunity to visit the regions of ancient Libya, rich in Jewish souvenirs and where Jewish institutions, which no European co-religionist <clears throat> had yet visited, subsist in prehistoric condition. After a camel ride of two days, I reached the mountainous region of the troglodytes of Garion. What a strange spectacle these fertile hills and dales present. Except some mosques and ruins, no trace of human habitation is seen in these regions where the dead are found above the ground and the living in caves, which the eye can scarcely discover. These Jews had their dead above underground, above ground, and they lived underground in Sheol, in hell. This is their ultimate plan to flip the world, to turn creation on its head, to block out the sun god Ra so that all organic life, which is based upon photosynthesis, and derives from organic compounds in the chemistry of life and the ecosystems of life is disappeared and cleansed with their new flood of geoengineering, of nuclear war, biological war, chemical war, burning down all the forests, blackening the skies. And then they are going to live underground. The living belong underground, according to them, which is the new Noah's Ark, where they're going to ride out this period, and the world to come, their new Jewish utopia in Olam Haba. No trace of human habitation is seen in these regions where the dead are found above the ground and the living in caves which the eye can scarcely discover. The regions of Garion inhabited by troglodytes, cave dwellers, contains a fair number of Muslim villages, uh, Muslim villages. If, however, this term can be applied to these naked hills 
of red earth like Edom. The Edomites also lived in caves underground where nothing indicates the existence of human beings. From time to time, the keen eye discovers amidst, amidst olive and fig trees. The olive tree is the tree of life. The fig tree is the tree of death, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Or near a mosque or ruins, holes open in the declivity of a hill, resembling in form the door of a cave. A little wooden door opens before the traveler, And he enters into a kind of dark and uneven gallery. They love the darkness. Sloping all the way to traverse which safely practice alone is essential. After a walk of 15 or 20 meters, 45 to 60 feet plus, one descends into a kind of court, feebly lighted from above by some rays of light and in the underground synagogue in uh, Marburg, Germany. The Jews protested when they opened up the roof to the light and built a glass cage over it to let the sunlight in. And I suspect the Jewish uh, community protested because they want to shun the sun god Ra and they don't want him shining in their medieval synagogue. Feebly lighted from above by some rays of light, there is the stable which precedes the central court and which often serves as a workshop to the Jewish blacksmiths. Continually descending down into hell, there are probably seven levels like the seven levels of hell. A subterranean court is reached, which serves as a central dwelling kitchen and workshop. The compartments being in caves dug in the walls of the court from which they receive little, a little light and air. The natives find subterranean life very natural and comfortable, though the tra traveler scarcely feels at ease. The synagogue in the village um, Beni Abbas is also situated in a cave, but the access is open and easy, and its roof is even above the level of the ground. Uh, this is a long article. It talks a lot about all of this. And it is absolute proof of these uh, North African troglodyte Jews who have been there, uh, were there before Josephus. And that's quite a while. I'm just uh, documenting this for anyone who's interested or uh, down the road, should it ever try to be covered up. That's the whole article. So in the uh, Old Testament, it also talks about Jews living in caves. Judges chapter 6, verse 2, because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. This is uh, the new Noah's Ark, is caves, underground strongholds, bunkers, tunnels throughout the world, in Switzerland, America, everywhere. All the major cities in America have major, massive underground uh, tunnels. And I suspect, I have a gut feeling that if they're able to put in these anti-Semitic frauds, these neo-Nazis, into power, they are going to drive Jewish people underground into these tunnels and bunkers as supposedly uh, their containment in the neo-concentration camps. But what it's really going to be is the new Noah's Ark where they're going to ride out World War III and all of us are going to be killed. And this will become their new Garden of Eden. And they're going to have their inorganic life forms be their new Esau, be their new soldiers and slaves and servants. And those uh, robots are going to keep uh, Gentile human beings as a cattle, as a food source, an organic 
food source in the world to come. And I have a, I know it sounds crazy because it is, but I have a lot of proof to substantiate all this. Uh, again, the, uh, the Essenes, the ones who wrote the Qumran scrolls, the virulently anti-Gentile uh, Dead Sea Scrolls calling for the war and the extermination of all of the Gentiles lived in caves, as did the Jews uh, during the Bar Kokhba revolt and uh, when they were fleeing from Hadrian and uh, the destruction of um, Judea, but also when they wanted to escape the... Uh, the um, Asmonean and Herodian uh, kings and practice their own virulently anti-Gentile form of um, Judaism. They uh, lived in caves. So this is their Noah's Ark. This is where they survive when everyone else is killed off. Uh, caves in which Jewish rebels hid, hid from Romans 2,000 years ago found in Galilee. This is where the uh, troglodyte Jews live. This is the form that their Noah's Ark takes, Neo-Noah's Ark. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai uh, lived in a cave for 12 years with his son, uh, Eleazar. And that's talked about in uh, the Babylonian Talmud, Tractate Shabbat, Folio 33b. Uh, they sat in the cave for 12 years. Elijah the prophet came and stood at the entrance of the cave and said, Who will inform Bar Yochai that the emperor died and his decree has been abrogated? This uh, Shimon Bar Yochai uh, is the most virulently anti-Gentile among the Jews. He's considered the Messiah, son of Joseph, of his time. He called he, Gentiles beasts, he said, and those beasts are literal beasts of the field to be eaten and consumed in the world to come at a great banquet feast, which Bhava Batra talks about in Folio 74 and which I've proven in uh, the Midrash, talks about eating Gentiles as a food source. Not only did uh, the very significant supposed author of the Zohar, the vehemently anti-Gentile Zohar, which calls for the extermination of uh, all Gentiles, as if Amalekites, as if the Kelly pot that has to be cleansed from existence so the Kedusha, the Holy Sparks, uh, can reign in their underground world to come. Not only he, but also the Hasidic founder of Judaism, Baal Shem Tov, used to meditate in caves in Ukraine. In Ukraine and Crimea, the Turkish Jews, the Khazars, and the uh, Karaites had their synagogues in caves, their temples in caves, and some of them lived in caves in underground cities. Uh, I discussed the cave of the patriarchs, which Abraham supposedly bought as a gravesite. Um, it is supposed to be the entrance to the Garden of Eden, the new Garden of Eden, meaning that the new Garden of Eden is underground, is hell. It is also where the divine presence of Shekinah, of Shekinah, uh, is supposed to live, Ms. Shin. Uh, Chabad has a website about all of that, uh, caves and kingships. Uh, Kabbalah illustrates the unique role of each of the terms used for the cave of Machpella. See if I can find a little bit of that. Abraham knew that the divine presence, the Shekinah, synonymous with Malkut. Malkut is the kingdom on the bottom of the tree of life. It's the world. It's the world to come. 
and it unites the two trees, the Sephirotic tree and the Kelipotic tree, unite in the earth of Malkut, which is Shekinah. So uh, the divine presence, Shekinah, is in this cave of the patriarchs. Uh, this uh, Sephirot Parsuf is synonymous with the divine presence, the Shekinah, the uh, Shekinah, which is also known as the field of holy apples. Inasmuch as the Machpela cave embodied the divine consciousness of the Shekinah, which will be revealed in the future world, the patriarchs were buried there. They also have legends in the Talmud that all the bones of dead Jews around the world will roll through tunnels that are <laughs> constructed under the earth back to Jerusalem. I'm not making this up. You can see this in the Kabbalistic horror films where you see these skeletons rolling underground. All of that is straight out of the Talmud and the Jewish legends that are also found in the Old Testament in Ezekiel chapter 37 of the old bones underground in the afterlife of the world to come attaining new flesh when they will all be resurrected as Jesus Christ was resurrected in a cave underground. And again, the Christians uh, had, under, had and have underground churches met in catacombs, burial places filled with dead bones. Uh, they would have their meetings. It's very, very, very satanic. And uh, they had secret societies where they would use a little black cubes as their uh, little passcodes to enter into these underground meetings where they would worship Satan. Uh, the city of Petra has buildings carved into the rock. This was common in the area around which Jews lived and the Edomites also had these same kind of underground cities built into the rocks and lived in caves and they were uh, converted to Judaism. Um, Antipater and uh, his lineage of the Herodotan, Herodian kings were Edomites. So these troglodytes uh, entered in and mixed with the Jewish people, one of several lineages of troglodytes that found Judaism appealing and were brought into the Jewish family, the Jewish fold. Again, the Turkish Jews were another one of, this, uh, of these troglodytes who were brought into the Jewish fold, both the Khazars and the Karaites. So the Karaites have their synagogues underground, and there are uh, big ones in Jerusalem, in uh, Istanbul, in Ukraine. And they, uh, the uh, Edomites also had, their, had lived underground. And this is described uh, in several places in the uh, Old Testament. Let me get out of the way so I can read it. Uh, Obadiah 3 and 4 talks about the Edomites. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the rocks, in other words, in caves up in the mountains, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, in other words, in caves at the top of mountains, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. And uh, the chief of those, those mountains was... Uh, Mount Seir and the Seir Mountains in which the Edomites lived. And, uh, and the Horites. Horites means cave dwellers, means troglodytes. So the Edomites were troglodytes, Horites, in their Mount Seir unto Elperon, which is by the wilderness. That's Genesis 
14.6. Genesis chapter 36, verse 20. These were the sons of Seir, the hairy goat, the Horite, the cave dweller, the um, troglodyte, who were living in the region. These Edomites were cavemen, and they became Jews. They were forced to convert to Judaism, as Josephus described. First Samuel 13.6, when the Israelites saw that their situation was critical and that their army was hard-pressed, they hid in caves and thickets among the rocks and in pits and cisterns. Joseph was in a cistern underground, uh, this is their Noah's Ark. They preserve themselves by living underground. And that's what their Noah's Ark is. That's what their world to come is. That's what their utopia is. And that's how they're going to ride out the World War III that they're going to impose on the rest of the world. So the Turkish Karite Karai, uh, Jews uh, from Ukraine, um, base their uh, practice of building synagogues underground on Psalm 130, verse 1, Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. And their Lord lives in the depths because their Lord is Satan who lives in hell. Uh, this is a Kerarite underground synagogue. It is one. Uh, it is the oldest synagogue in Jerusalem. Is the Karaite underground synagogue? Karaite synagogue in Istanbul is also beneath the ground. Uh, the Karaite temple synagogue of Heskoy, located underground, as is the custom of the Karaites testifies to the existence of this population in the city for many centuries. In 2009, during a memorial visit to Poland and Lithuania, I had the opportunity to visit the Karaite leader. Our group was received by representatives of this community. On the walls, the temple, there were stars of David and inscriptions in Turkish. These are Turkic Jews witnessing the double origin of these Trakai Karaites who came from Crimea. There are underground cities and cave temples in Crimea, as I'm going to show. There are also Karaites in Poland, and it seems that their presence there was quite strong earlier. This is from the article, Long Live Jewish Presence in Istanbul. Uh, I looked in the guidebook, which mentioned two Knossos Karaite prayer houses. That must be these. But what are the Karaites? The guidebook briefly mentions them as a dissident Jewish sect. To explain, we need to go a long way back, all the way to an ancient and rather shadowy realm known as Khazaria. These are Turkish Jews, and Turkish Jews had underground temples, synagogues. Cultural landscape of cave towns of the Crimean Gatha. And those cave towns were for a time occupied by the Khazars, Khazar, part of the Khazarian expansion. Uh, this is another um, cave-dwelling region that was occupied by the Khazars, Khazar remains in Ukraine. Khazar Khaganate, Khazar fortified settlement, and these were cave dwellings. Complexes of cave temples, cave hermitry, existing caves or building new ones to hermit or to perform religious practices. There are six worship caves and cave complexes, underground cave synagogues. 
the times of Israel talked about these underground synagogues that are, were discovered in Spain. About 175 miles northeast, the ancient city of Ubeda stands another formerly unknown synagogue with a medieval mikvah. The uh, underground Jews in Chabad in New York said that they were building this tunnel for a mikvah or ritual bath, which gives it a nickname, the synagogue of water buried under the bedrock of the city's surrounding houses. The synagogue lay undisturbed until it was accidentally unearthed in 2007. There's the mikvah where uh, Jewish women would take a ritual bath to cleanse themselves after menstruation. The synagogue of water is divided into seven interconnected chambers, seven as in the seven levels of hell, including the well-preserved mikvah. Here is a website dedicated to the Spanish synagogue of water, Synagoga del Agua. This is that underground synagogue I was talking about in Marburg, and uh, the um, Jewish community objected to the fact that they built a uh, glass cover for it so that the light would shine through into it. Evidently, they didn't want Ra, the sun god, shining down into their uh, medieval synagogue which has a Magen David, a shield of David, star of David in it. Uh, here's a picture of the medieval synagogue in Marburg, underground synagogue in Marburg, Germany. So yeah, it's a real thing. And yeah, I was right. They are planning to uh, ride out the apocalypse in their new Noah's Ark underground. And they're planning to make the new world to come, Olam Haba, destroy the present world, Olam Hazeh, and replace it with the world to come, Olam Haba, underground in hell. And they want to make their god, Seth, triumph over Horus and Ra, the god of the sun, they want to get rid of the sun and they're deliberately blocking out the sun in the name of fighting climate change. And by blocking the sun, they're causing the oceans to heat up even more because the photonic action of the sun hitting the water causes evaporation. Evaporation has a cooling effect. They are also dispersing moisture into the atmosphere which is uh, the worst of the uh, greenhouse causing substances in the atmosphere. They are setting forest fires. All of this, instead of fighting climate change, artificially generates climate change and makes things hotter, not cooler. So as is always the way they lie to us to get us to go along with this by creating uh, the artificial dilemma that the earth is heating up. And then all their proposed solutions for the earth heating up, for the earth becoming the fire and brimstone, uh, the fire and sulfur of hell, is to put sulfur into the atmosphere, to fill the atmosphere with brimstone, with sulfur, and to burn all the forests as we've seen all these forest fires these last couple of years. They are literally turning the earth into their description of hell as fire and brimstone. They are setting up to have us force them underground into the new neo-concentration camps of hell in the bunkers and tunnels. And that's going to be their salvation, their Noah's Ark, where they're going to ride out the apocalypse that they're setting up. And then they're going to create their new world to come, Olam Haba, the Jewish utopia, beneath the ground. And they are building their synagogues for that event as we speak. Uh, I again want to thank my donors. If anyone wants to, uh, to uh, contribute, 
you can uh, do so at my website, cjvbooks.com. I need your contributions to survive and to keep doing this groundbreaking work. I'm the only one uh, in all of human history who has exposed this plan and figured out exactly what they're up to, what they're planning for us. They're planning to use us as a food source. Um, they are planning to live underground. Their religion is grounded in darkness. Uh, they have always had groups of troglodytes, and that is their ultimate goal, to become a race of troglodytes that feasts upon the rest of humanity as their cattle. And they, are, they have this tradition of cannibalism, as I've shown in my previous videos. Uh, the Roman historian Dios Cassius recorded the fact that they slaughtered half a million Greeks and Romans and then feasted upon them. I've shown how they eat placenta and foreskins and other, but it's very disgusting. I don't like talking about it, but it is kosher for them to eat human beings. Let's put it that way. Uh, the Talmud specifies, and it was again Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai who specified that Gentile graves do not defile. In other words, we are kosher food for them. So as hard as all this is to believe, again, I've only scratched the surface of the proof that I have accumulated proving all of this. I, not, I want to warn everyone. Uh, I've been warning Jewish people for 25 years, very publicly, that they are entering into an age of horror and they are being driven into it by the same forces that drove them into the Holocaust. They should not participate in any of this because <clears throat> it is going to be as harmful to them as it is going to be harmful to all of humanity. We need to stop this. I hope that by exposing the horrors of this, that I can inspire people to finally start taking political action to insist that these people be prosecuted and drawn into the courts. That's one of the reasons I'm accumulating all of this evidence to do so. So we, we got to get active. You can see how the protests against Israel are putting pressure upon the Biden administration to um, curtail its support of the Israeli genocide of the Palestinian people. Political action works. We need to take legal, political action to save ourselves from this future. Because if we don't, cave-dwelling Jews will take over the earth and completely destroy the rest of humanity. I want to thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please do donate. I need your contributions to survive. Thank you again. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.